Hey guys, Doc here to tell you about something that could really give you the edge in gaming. I'm talking about our show sponsor, Fade Grips. Thumbstick grips as well as controller grips that give comfort, precision, and control so you can take your gaming to the next level. Just go to fadegrips.store and check out all they have to offer. And with our promo code, CAG20, at checkout, you can get 20% off your entire order. That's fadegrips.store with offer code CAG20. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 36 of Cross Atlantic Gaming. I'm your host Risky the Kid and joining me this week are my co-hosts Chocolate Bear. How you doing thanks? And Doc H1X1. Hey hey. Our rotating fourth chair is broken so it's just going to be us three tonight. Intimate. Very... Is that why you set the candles Chocolate? I thought that was a little weird. Do you not like the mood music? I mean the candles were fine but then when you started pouring wine and forcing me to drink it that was a little i don't know and we've already gone too far (laughs) first up we do have a new patron this week and that patron is ryan h 93 woo woo thank you ryan thanks for the support ryan all the support is appreciated obviously if you'd like to be more like ryan you can head on over to patreon.com slash cag podcast Support us there. Our next game giveaway will be in a few weeks. (laughs) I don't know exactly what episode it is. Three episodes away, maybe. Um, Look forward to that. Something like that. Um, All right. No host, just us. Another week of gaming under our belts. It looks like I have much more to talk about than everybody else, so I'm going to (laughs) start with me and my week in gaming. (laughs) Um. So, I beat Mark of the Ninja. Nice. And so I now have two games done this year already. Not that I made... I wasn't even on the New Year's Resolution podcast, <laughs> but <laughs> my New Year's Resolution would be to beat 12 games, a game a month. I think that's pretty, pretty good that's one, and we already got two down. Even if they are Switch titles and they're, I want to say a little smaller, but not really. This one still was 10 hours. Is that a r- rollover rule? Do you get, like, if you do two this month, does that carry over? Yeah, I think it, it was more of a 12 games okay. in the, okay. during the year. I think I'd have to make it that way, otherwise it wouldn't get done. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mark the Ninja was really good. It it wasn't super long. Like I said, maybe 10 hours, if not a little less than that. Um, I really liked the end of it. I talked about the gameplay and stuff before, but it does wrap up nicely. Um, for the first time in the game, you're given two choices at the very end of the game. Just... Uh, it's two story decisions, pretty much. Are you going to follow this path or are you going to follow this path? Um, I did play them both, and I liked my first path more. And if you've played this before, it's the path to the right. I don't really want to spoil anything. But, um, yeah, Mark of the Ninja was really good, and I definitely suggest it if you do have a Switch. Good good stealth game. Um, I started up a few games this week and didn't get to play a ton of them, but Valkyria Chronicles 4, I know, Doc, you had talked about one Mm-hmm. last week so i actually did fire it up um i'm not sure how much they've actually changed <laughs> across <laughs> these games because oh, really <laughs> it was weird like everything that you had said i was like oh, okay like that sounds okay and it sounds like they could probably improve on some of these things <laughs> and then i got into my game and i was like huh <laughs> sounds like exactly what doc described <laughs> except for for the first game so where are we? <laughs> just wait for five, Risky. It'll it'll blow your mind away. It'll change everything. Uh, so the thing that you were talking about where this like different chapters you're going through in the game. So I don't know if one does the same thing, but it looks like, like a, a picture book kind of. Yes, yeah. Okay. It's like blank boxes, basically. Yeah, and then so the boxes will get filled with pictures, and it's like, all right, you have a new mission. And you click on it, and then it's it's literally just a, a cut scene. It's not gotcha. even like, yeah, it's not even a cut scene because it's just like two characters' faces just animated talking. There's not a lot of other stuff going on, and they just sit there and talk for 10, 15 minutes, and you're like, all right. And then it ends. God, it's it's like the biggest Rick Rolled <laughs> moment of our time. Like you're like, oh, please be a mission, please be a mission. It's like Rick Rolled just pops up on YouTube. It's like mother. But then <laughs> the funniest thing is, you finish this one, and you're like, okay, whatever. And then you click on the next one, it's another goddamn And it's another scene. one! 
Couldn't have strung them together, could you? Uh, right. Like, I, that's what I don't understand. Why do I have to click on another thing, like another chapter select thing, when it's just going to be another cutscene? Why not tie these things together? Uh, yeah, <laughs> In case I want to go back and listen to that specific five minutes of dialogue. It's interactive. It's better than the Telltale games. Oh, it's not that interactive, oh, no, John. <laughs> it's not even that, yeah. <laughs> At least they had achievements in those. So <laughs> I feel like I've, I've played maybe two or three hours of this game, and I've played two missions at this point. And yeah, same. <laughs> honestly, the missions are – they're a lot of fun when you're actually playing them. Like the combat in this yeah. game, to me, or I can't think of any other games that play like this where it's no. kind of like an RTS, but you're – moving actually your character shooting around and, and like aiming shots yeah and yeah like if you have a sniper you're actually aiming down sights and sniping at people and like it it throws your like miss chances or you're like um those different percentages just get worked into the actual shot you're taking yeah um it's it's one of those things where like it's not like a pure numbers game like if you run out in the open it's it, it's random chance of whether or not you'll get hit but it matters where you run and what you run behind and stuff like that yeah, it's it, it, it's like you said, it, I don't think there's another genre quite like it, really. And I think that is what it has going for it. If it was just standard RTS stuff, I don't think this game may hold up just because of the story. The story is interesting. Like, there's one overarching thing I'm trying to do. Like, we're losing a war, and what our squadron needs to do is get, it, like, deep into the heart of enemy territory and take down their, like, main base. And that's, like, the thing we're trying to do. That's, like, the end game. So now this is just the journey to that, the different battles on our way in there. Um, I haven't gotten into a lot of the, like, relationshipy stuff because I know you can go to, like, the barracks or the mess hall or whatever and, like, have <laughs> oh, these conversations. Yeah, and, like, I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but you can upgrade your uh, your weapons and stuff, right? Yeah, so at least uh, with what I've got in one so far is there's that component. Uh, there is – it. it the idea I'm getting, at least from the first one, is that it's much more heavily focused on who is in your squad specifically as in characters. And, like, I feel like that's where the strategy comes into play so far in one is who I've got in my squad and what they can do. So um, is that based off of, like, what role they have? Like, if they're yes. a lancer or a scout? Yep. yep. So another part of this, if you, like, scroll through your actual characters in your squad, it'll tell you what characters they like. So, like, they'll work well if they're with... Raz or something like depending on what character they're actually working with i'm assuming they get some type of buff if they're working with people that they quote unquote like um so i don't know it's it that's kind of there's some deep layers there and especially with some weird attributes that people get like i have a my sniper chick has one of her traits is hatred of men i think is exactly what it's called <laughs> Um, so if she's anywhere on the battlefield, like if I bring her and just run her by like a male scout, she'll make some like stupid comment about him. Like, Oh my God, I don't trust you or whatever stupid thing she's going to say. <laughs> and then if you park her next to him, she's going to get like negative effects because she's trying to snipe and there's a horrible man next to her just ruining her day. <laughs> so, like her life. So a lot of weird stuff like that. In this Does game. it buff up when she goes to kill a man? I don't know, but you, you, I would assume so, Chocolate. I think that makes a lot of sense. You should be in game design, at least for Valkyria. I feel like we're just describing Girl with the Dragon Tattoo right now. But. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, all right, moving on from that. Um, I started yeah. a way out with the Meg. <laughs> How's that gone? Um. <laughs> Pretty well. She wanted to watch a movie or something one night, and I was like, how about we just play a video game instead? So that went over about as well. Oh, if it's anything like how it goes over with me and that, I'd, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we, we started off, I mean, this isn't great because it's clearly not something she has any interest in doing, but I was like, no, nah, well, I need to play this with somebody sitting on the couch, so just just sit there, and we're going we're gonna to work this out. Um, so we started the game, and have either of you played this? I have not. Uh, it's in my backlog. Okay. Um, I, if you could convince the wives to, to even give it a shot, I think it'll pay off because about five minutes into this game, uh, she was hooked. We played it for t uh, maybe like two hours straight that first night. Um, that game is really something, and I wish that I had played it 
earlier and not waited so long because I think it has a great story to tell and how the game actually plays isn't like anything else I've ever played where, like I said, you have to play it co-op. Um, you don't have to do it couch co-op. You can do it online. I think it obviously pays off to have somebody right next to you doing these things. But So you're each doing your own things on the screen, and then it'll make the split screen like bigger if something more um, impactful to like the story is happening on one side. So if her guy was having a conversation with a guard trying to get like a tool or something, it might shrink my screen down a little bit smaller. And it just, it does a bunch of weird stuff like that, which it's really cool. I've never seen anything like it. Um, it seems like it's telling a pretty straightforward get out of jail story, but we also got out of jail in the first like hour. So, I feel like there's a lot more to this that happens after we got out of jail or this game's about to end in like 10 minutes and I, it's the shortest game ever. That's um, another one down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's good though. Um, it, one funny thing, it's the last thing I'll end with, is when we first started, my guy, the guy I chose, is just being put into jail. So he's arriving, he's getting... Um, he has to like strip down and they hose him down and all this stuff. So I'm doing that while she, her guy is just up looking over at everything that's going on. Kind of like looking down at the yard, looking at us walk out of the transport bus into the jail. Um, and she was just doing that and focusing on my screen more. And my guy's like walking through, like I said, they strip him down and they start hosing him down. And this whole time that all this stuff's going down for me, she was supposed to have started doing stuff with her character to, like, get up to the point where we could progress the story. So it it came to a point where my guy has just been standing here, like, hands up against the wall, getting hosed down naked for a good three or four minutes at this point. And he just keeps saying the same things over and over, like, you think we're done now? Is that enough? And I was like is there something that you're supposed to be doing right now? She's like, no, I can't find a way out of here. There's nothing to do. And then, like, she looks 90 degrees to the left, and there's just a doorway to walk through. Uh, like, All right, well, <laughs> so that's how it deals with you not progressing anything, uh, like, unevenly or not, like, how the story intends. Um, that was kind of funny. But uh, seems like a good game. And I think, like I said, you should give it a shot. Is that in the uh, EA Access Vault? It is. I okay, think that's cool. how I have it. I don't think I actually bought it. Cool, cool, cool. Maybe. I don't know. Um, all right, let's move to somebody else for a minute. Chocolate, you finished yes. a game this week. I did indeed, and I'm glad it's gone. Chocolate, chocolate, oh, chocolate, so chocolate, don't you start. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Oh. You're recording, but you're not recording. You're not recording. Is that my left ear, my right ear? So, Hellblade <laughs> is done and put to bed. You put her to sleep. I put, I f- the end of that game, I'm not going to spoil anything, so I need to try and choose my words wisely. It feels like a never-ending battle. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought th- you were going some Like so, her okay. mental disorder. <laughs> well, like her disorder, yes. Um, but yeah, it... it, it well, once you think you're trying to push through and push through and you think, yes, I finally got it. And then more people appear and more people appear. You're like, oh my God, I'm going to be here forever. And then it finished and it was done. <laughs> and it you sound was relieved. Done. I, I am. It's a really good game. Um, and I think I explained it in Discord probably very poorly as I normally do. But the game, the gameplay and mechanics of the fighting and the movement are pretty average. They're okay. It's the puzzles that are really good, really intriguing. The f- Obviously, the sound is... I've never experienced sound like it. And the fact that the people in your head, or in her head, are telling her when the enemy is going to attack her or when an enemy from behind is going to kind of stab her, it's... It's really, really good. It's best uh, environmental game, I suppose, is maybe the better word for it that I've that I've ever played, hands down. And I'm glad I did. Really so glad I did. Definitely interested to see what they do next now that they're 
first party for Microsoft. Did you play it through that doc? I did not, not yet. I yeah. need to, but I have it. Uh, haven't touched it yet. Hang on, wait. Have I played a game that you two haven't? Yeah, I haven't. It's it's on the list. Oh. Yeah, it's 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 a short game. Um, I think there's possibly three puzzles that threw me, but other than that, I think I managed to do it in through with my gaming time about three weeks, which is not too bad. I think it's only meant to be six to ten hours. I think. No, okay, that's not, I was gonna say so one. One good day of gaming for me, I can knock this thing out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you'd be able so to get rid of minutes, it. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> and done. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's great. I'd suggest anyone to play it. It's really... Don't expect too much from the combat. Focus more on the puzzles and the environment. And the game's unreal. The game is really unreal. It's really good. Good deal. Um, all right, Doc game just came out recently ace combat 7 yeah q kenny loggins let's go <laughs> Woo! Danger uh, zone. <laughs> yeah i've been a big fan of the ace combat series for a long time and this is a this is a really good ace combat game um that's i, I hate to sum it up like that but that's you kind of know what you're getting with it like if you've played a previous ace combat game this is that it's a new one um the the thing i like about them is because I've played and beat four of the Ace Combat games in the series, but the good thing about this, the and I'll I'll say it, it's an anime. It it's kind of an anime story. Like it's not Valkyria Chronicles, but it's kind of an anime story. Um, but all these stories in each game are self-contained. You don't have to know anything about the other one to um, follow what's going on. I mean, I think they use the same continent and things like that, but that's as uh, that's as far as any of the story actually goes. Are they um, good stories? They're actually not bad because, as far as I can tell, and I mean, I, I'm assuming this is the theme for every one because four out of the one, four of the ones I played all had the same general story structure. The general story structure is the story is told from the perspective of somebody that is not you, that as in you, the pilot, when you're playing the game. The story is always told from somebody else that is kind of a outsider's perspective, looking in from one aspect or another of the war. Like in the in in I think it might have been Ace Combat four or three one of my favorite ones. You was the aspect of this kid who happened to be um, a refugee uh, at the barracks of the enemy ace pilot that you were constantly going head to head towards the, uh, the climax of that game. And towards the end, it's kind of like when you finally shoot down that guy, you kind of get the perspective of that kid being like, you know, I'm glad that guy's dead, but he actually was a good. He was a ni- he was always nice to me. I have mixed feelings, you know, now that my country's liberated, but this horrible e- enemy ace pilot was actually always very kind to me, you know, kind of thing. So, like, you, it, it, but all the games play from the perspective of your, the story's told from somebody who is not you in a different perspective. So, Seven is told from this girl who always wanted to be a pilot, and her father was in the, was a pilot in the military, and she's always kind of been around that aspect of, uh, pilot military lifestyle and she builds her own plane war breaks out and she happens to be flying her plane she built at the time and gets shot down by a, by this invading enemy plane like right when the invasion's going down Bunch and then of she dicks. Gets, yeah well <laughs> it gets even better because the country which she is from who who you think oh well she got recovered by her own country's military actually charged her with a uh, uh, flying a plane that she didn't have papers for, but essentially, <laughs> <laughs> and she gets sent to a penal battalion, <laughs> which like uh, sounds like something chocolate would be into. Well, <laughs> I, I was about to say I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys like no for like like I always think of like penal battalions as like from Russian World War Two times, like that was where they would send people who did they didn't want to throw in prison, but they would rather have his cannon fodder <laughs> basically. <laughs> so you get she gets thrown in one of those flash forward to who you are and what you're doing you're just a normal pilot in the military fending off this invasion skipping over a lot of main stuff there's the president that is at this facility that is in enemy controlled territory and you have to go try to rescue him well shit goes bad and you think he dies and not only that but you might have accidentally shot him down Jeez, and don't give me all the spoilers. Well, doc. I'm not because like that's that's not the half of it. I'm just setting up the 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 propulsion of what drives the story along. And so, for better or for worse, you get blamed for like they don't even give you like a fair court. It's just like, oh, did you actually shoot him down? No, you assassinated his ass. You were oh. going to jail. <laughs> like, 
Uh, so you get sent to the same penal battalion that that one chick is in. And so you have to kind of... It, it's the weirdest form of prisoner rehabilitation I think I've ever seen in the in a prison system ever. It's like, <laughs> you get sent to prison, here's a jet, here's a F-16 Tomcat, go, like, go redeem yourself. <laughs> so... It's... Sounds amazing. That's what kind of happens, um, and so that's what propels the story forward then. And then you also get a mix of the story. It's not just from this girl, but you also get a part of the story which is told from the enemy of this kingdom and, like, this scientist, and he happens to be around the enemy ace pilot. I feel like a lot of their stories involve – they always kind of cul culminate to you're an ace, the enemy has their ace. It's culminating to that climax of you two facing off. Like you, you have like close shaves fighting each other in previous missions, and it all culminates to like a final showdown. And the one thing the Ace Combat Games does brilliantly is atmosphere and music, and they set up some epic, epic dogfights with music and like build up. And I don't think I've ever played a game that does it quite so well. And you would never think like a arcade jet fighter game would be good at that but that game is really good at that please say um, they've got danger zone they don't but i played oh. that over in spotify so <laughs> i made it happen i turned down the volume all the way and then i just k kicked uh. on kenny loggins and half of the <laughs> half of the uh, uh top gun soundtrack and oh. we were good so i've got you goose i've got yeah. you <laughs> did uh did you get a chance or i don't even know if the servers are up but did you get a chance to try out any of the multiplayer because that's new to the game right yes uh well i don't know if it's I don't know if it's new because PS3 had like a weird free to play Ace Combat game. Oh, uh, okay. That was probably had. I don't know. I have not tried that at all yet. I am blitzing. I'm not blitzing through, but I'm playing the campaign because the campaign's really good. The story is not bad. Like, if this qualifies as an anime story, it's hands down, in my opinion, the best one I've played yet. Oh, so boy. It's 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 not extensive. It's not overdone. It's not. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's just they have these probably three-minute cutscenes that kind of convey something, and then you move on to the next mission, and you might see the perspective of the, the, in, of the enemy ace and all this stuff. But um, it's really cool, though. Uh, some of the cockpit chatter is not maybe the most well-written stuff ever, but it's, you know, whatever, it's fine. Do you think it's, that's it's a translation issue? or just No, just I don't think so. Bad I, anime I, I think talk? They're getting a, I think they're getting across what they want to say. It's just kind of cheesy. Okay. Like, no, yeah. It's... Uh, I'm playing Valkyria yeah. Chronicles, Doc, so I know all about it's cheesy hard dialogue. To tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, <no. laughs> yeah. No. Um, uh, so yeah. you flight stick in this bad boy, or are you? No, no. I, I actually never have gotten uh, a flight stick uh, or for a video game and used it. Um, it's one of those things I thought about it with uh, Elite Dangerous because that game is so sim related or sim oriented that I thought it might be fun for that, but. The thing about Ace Combat for me, and it's nothing against people that enjoy it with a flight stick, but it's so arcadey that I don't, I don't know. I, I just feel like, yeah, I could use a flight stick, but it, I don't feel like it's necessary the same way like Elite Dangerous might have it. Shit, not my dreams. <laughs> no, I, I mean, no. I mean, I, hey, look, dude, if you want to throw on like a helmet with the oxygen mask, and, like I said, turn on <laughs> Kitty Loggins, and your call sign is is Wolverine too, you go, you do it. By the way, the, your, your guy's name in this is Trigger. So oh, can we get a trigger. vote for maybe best best like protagonist name ever for a for a pilot Trigger? I mean, really. Trigger does not translate well over in the UK. <laughs> I've just got. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only fools apparently... and horses reference there. Well, we just lost a UK <laughs> audience. So. Anyways, uh, highly recommend this game. Um, it is, uh, I, I, you know, and it's one of those things to where you don't have to be a fan of Ace Combat. And especially if you are worried that this is a flight sim game. This is not a flight sim game in any way whatsoever. Your plane looks like it has four missiles on it. Turns out you have 90 in your stock file. <laughs> um, you know, you're not fighting, you're fighting G's and you're playing install and stuff, but it's not in any way, you know, like other games to where, like War Thunder makes it to where if you play realistically, if you get too many G's, your guy will pass out. Your pilot will, like, literally pass out. So, like, what? you know, it, well, I don't know if he passes out, but, like, you can you can damage your plane or, like, you, your plane can sustain damage if you take G's, too many G's in the wrong way in games like that that are actually more sim-oriented. This game has none of that, so... Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, no, this game is 100% arcade, but... Damn, is it a really... It is the best, like, flight arcade game possibly ever, in my opinion, That's the, as a series. And this is more of that, and the story is good. Um, it's not, you know, it's not going to win, like... <laughs> I'm not saying it's winning, like, best picture for a story or anything like that, but it is it is a good video game story. 
and the last battle might have been one of the most best goosebumpy feeling moments of a it's all led to this dog fight I, you you essentially have the other planes are dog fighting and everybody kind of backs off and enemy and enemy and allied planes are pretty much like standing watching the two like alpha males go at it in the middle like in this epic music is happening and it's really good so definitely check out this game um i want to apologize to ladonian because he's my game share partner and apparently he's having trouble playing this uh as we speak so we're trying to figure out our game share stuff but um mm, weird yeah but anyways uh yeah highly recommend this game it's super good and even though you have a hatred for flight sticks i just ordered the Thrustmaster. <laughs> <laughs> Because it Talk was about names, by the way. Talk about great names. Master. Wow. The, uh, I ordered that. Yeah, I don't care what you do in your own time, okay? We, talk, <laughs> we discussed that we would not talk about this on the podcast. So. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we had uh, a deal pop up in our deal section on Discord for the Thrustmaster Master Hotas 1, I think is what one it is, um, mm -hmm. for 50 bucks. So I bought it, and now... I already pre-ordered. I had pre-ordered um, Ace Combat, uh, but now I'm not going to play it for another week until the stupid <laughs> flight stick comes in. Because be a waste if I <laughs> started playing it without it. I guess tainted your experience with with dual analog sticks. Exactly. So barbarian. <sighs> Great. <laughs> I love watching you spend money. I'm so jealous. I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> um, I'm pretty good at these. <laughs> Chocolate, you're playing some Battle Royale games. Fortnite and PUBG, what's going on there? I am. I have uh, I don't know what's taken over me. Since I've got this Switch, I've been playing games that I would n not necessarily play. So I've jumped on the Fortnite bandwagon and started murdering people. I'm Whoa. loving it. What? Loving it. That's I not know. even a humble brag at that point. No. Like, like you're good at it now? I, well, <laughs> uh, meh. It's like it crazy, yeah. Risky. Yeah, well, you can ask Ladonian. I can't build for for anything. So in duos, we've I want to say we've got a pattern set down. So Ladonian will build, and I'll just run around the back of the other guy and shoot him in the head. Oh, so you're just a flanker. But, uh, playing your position. Just, well, position maybe I'm playing the Play, noob. Playing your class. Who knows? I'm playing the noob. But yeah, I think it works really well. Um, and then I jumped on Fortnite on the Xbox and got murdered. Yep, that'll happen. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, because if you don't build, you are no good. Um, <laughs> Experienced that one firsthand <laughs> quite a few yeah. times. But it's it's the only game that I can actually land at a set location. Um, <laughs> if <laughs> if you play with me in PUBG, Blackout, or any other game where you have to land somewhere, I'll be four or five clicks the wrong way. So <laughs> four or five yeah. clicks. <laughs> I've been watching some SEAL team as well, so I've got I've got some army lingo. Just you know, if you want to drop any of that throughout the podcast at random times, uh, feel free. Yeah. Well, like how far, how many clicks I am behind you? No problem. Exactly. We're just gonna talk in NATO Here phonetic code the rest of the way out. So <laughs> yeah. get ready. Lock up and load. <laughs> so yeah, that's it really. I've just been I've just got the the bug again for battle royale. Not very good at it, but it's fine. Well, it's fine. Speaking of battle royale, I did have one blackout story. Obviously, that's why I, sh I should just do one of these every week, right? This should be a segment. <laughs> Risky's Blackout Story of the Week. Um, yeah. So one of our newer community members, uh, Blade, I played a game with him, Dan Pod, and Shopa, which is a pretty good squad for a carry, especially since he uh, Blade hasn't played the game a ton. So we were like, all right, yeah, we'll play. We played for maybe a couple hours, and like our only goal is just to get him a win. So... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think I know how this so, ended. Uh -oh. Hang on, is this the <laughs> night that he installed it, or was it the night <laughs> after? No, I think this was uh, maybe a week. <laughs> I don't know. See, I didn't know the setup to this, so this is I, I'm interested now. So we were all playing. He, <laughs> we we landed the cargo docks, docks every drop. We got him there. Um, he died immediately. <laughs> Rest in peace. Um, but instead of hitting the spectate button, he hit the leave button. Oh, <laughs> no. So for the next 20 to 30 minutes on our way to a victory, Blade had to listen to us in party chat. Oh, no. 
uh, just just playing the game, making call outs, murdering literally everyone we ran into, uh, and then we got a win. But because oh. he had left the game instead of spectating it, he didn't get credit for it. <laughs> oh. I'm gonna have to ask Blade if living vicariously through you is all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. I'm sure, <laughs> I do not think he was enjoying himself. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, we had a couple good games after that, but we didn't get any wins. <laughs> so <laughs> it was. I just thought it was so funny. I was like, dude, this is the one, the one game that you quit out of on accident, and that's the one we're gonna win. But this also happened last night where we played maybe like four hours, didn't get a single win. I finally got killed at the very beginning of a game, and Rage quit. Rage quit. Quit like nicely like, like okay guys hey i'm done i'm shutting off my <laughs> xbox i didn't just shut it off and not say anything um and then i get a text from three different people about 20 minutes later hey we finally got a win it was after i had shut oh. the damn thing off so i was like ah it's, i know salt in the feels. wind there <laughs> uh, Burn. that's great <laughs> all right um you guys have anything else anything else you played this week and may have forgotten about I'm just trucking away at Valkyria Chronicles 1, but I think the one thing that we can say we've really resolved in a good way with our discussion about this is I guess I don't need to play 2 and 3, <laughs> it sounds like, uh, as far as nope. if I'm looking for gameplay advancements. so uh, That's the the one nice thing I'll say about 4 is that I this is my first game in the series, and I will say I in no way feel like I had to play anything before this. So yeah, um, it's definitely a good jumping off point, and it's probably the most polished one out of all of them, I would assume. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm enjoying that though. So, I mean, I, I'll still keep trucking along with that too, um, because, like you said, I like how the gameplay is. I just wish I could do more of it. So, do yeah. less watching and more playing your video <laughs> game. Well, y- you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, chocolate. You good? No, I'm good. Well, then I guess we can move into some news. <laughs> All right, Doc, what is in the news this week? So we got uh, Quick mostly, mostly bad news. I guess you could sum it up that way. Most news um, is bad news, I feel like. <laughs> Nowadays. Uh, first up, I hope you weren't really looking forward to playing uh, Overkill's The Walking Dead on console because it's delayed indefinitely oh. currently. Uh, nope, uh, can't say it was. <laughs> can't say you was. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> Then, then you're in luck because you don't have to worry. So, I want uh, to play as Rick Grimes. What's going on? Well, I don't think you were going to play as Rick Grimes, anyways. I was saying, but I, don't think so. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know if it's yeah. I guess AMC might have the that that locked up or his likeness at least maybe. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah. So that's delayed indefinitely. That is currently. I want to say it's. I don't know if it's out on PC, but I know you can play it on PC. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but, I think um, it was out on PC. So it's out, out. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, console delayed indefinitely. Um, I, apparently that studio has been having some, uh, troubles as of late and, uh, I guess stay tuned if you're holding out hope that that's still gonna, you know, happen when it comes to, uh, consoles, uh, Xbox, PS4. So we'll see. Um, Black Desert Online, you guys got any interest in this upcoming MMO, uh, for Xbox? Um, currently on PC coming to Xbox next month, I believe. No, sir. No time for Negative. MMOs. What if... But wait. What if they added a Battle Royale mode? Blackout. Okay, never mind then. I guess that still doesn't grab you. Okay, well, we tried. <laughs> Pack it up. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they're getting a Shadow Arena, uh, which is their take. I want to say their take. You know, it's not a... We're not saying this is run around with guns, you know, thing, but... There is their take on a battle royale. Uh, it looks like it could be interesting. I think my problem is I probably won't be getting into that game regardless, so it might be one I kind of miss out on. But maybe it'll be fun to watch on Mixer and Twitch. We'll see. But uh, anyways, this just goes on to continue the fact that every game in existence will eventually get battle royale. Looking at you next, Tetri- Tetris. So, you know, come on. Where you at? Oh, Tetris. <laughs> now, 100 blocks. God, drop that it once. sounds awful. <laughs> Um, and that's, Anyways. that's starting this Wednesday, I think. Yes. Yes. Um, the Epic Store Launcher, which have you guys downloaded that to get in on the free games they're giving away every week? No, nope. sir. <laughs> what 
is right? I, I get it that I'm a thrifty guy, but what is wrong with you people? <laughs> I don't Free know. games, Everything. come on, they're just there. <laughs> Ain't got no time for that. <laughs> All right. Anyways, well, the Epic Game Store um, has come out with a a pretty good uh, stance when it comes to refunds. They are doing a no questions asked refund policy. Um, I looked for how long this, you know, how far you could stretch this out in terms of uh, the length of time. Because obviously, you know, does that mean I could have a game, own it for a year, beat it, and be like, hey, refund, please. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I'm assuming that would not work, but in terms of, um, it's uh, it's two weeks from purchase and less than two hours played. It's the same as yeah. uh, Steam's. Oh, J.K. Never mind. Okay, sorry. I didn't know the two hour part either. So got you. Uh, so I guess they're just on par with Steam. I was kind of hoping they didn't have the time limit thing, but I guess that makes sense though. Um, I mean, it's a so good. Yeah. it's a good policy. Right? Yeah. That no, I mean it's like better than no. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, and hey, I mean, some games, you know, I mean, it, you don't even need that two hours, so. Um, Just blow so back messed out up. on the, <laughs> black out on the PC. <laughs> yeah. You get your, you get your one Battle Royale victory and then refund, and you have a perfect record. Call it. Retire. Retire forever. Um, next up, continuing also with the theme that everybody that owns a multi-million dollar company, a billion dollar company, I should say, is getting a streaming service for video games. Verizon is going to roll out its own cloud gaming service. Uh, Risky, uh, we're looking at you for all our inside info on this one. Uh, what can you tell us about, uh, about about what I'm assuming you've already been playing for months now? You know. Yeah, it's a super secret uh, <laughs> Netflix-style cloud gaming service. Uh, Sweet. Called Verizon Gaming, so stay tuned for all that. Right. It's going to be Sweet. Nice. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> no, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, th I feel like, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what, you know, Google's going to have theirs, Verizon's going to have theirs, Microsoft's going to have theirs, Sony kind of already has theirs, you know, I don't know, I'm assuming Amazon might eventually have theirs, probably, um, but... It's going to be interesting to see how all those pans out. Uh, I will say, like, uh, aside from, I know, Risky, you have problems with the Google one. I, I didn't really have any problems with that, and I will say it worked really well uh, for what it's worth. Um, so I, the, as far as the proof is in the pudding of does it work, it, it oh. worked well for me. Yeah, um, and actually, this is a news story. I got gigabit internet this past week. Oh, shit. Woo! <laughs> so I haven't gone back and tried all that stuff. So... <laughs> I, wow. It should be good now. <laughs> Dude, I am so jealous. Like, I've got 400 down, but, like, I'm still really jealous of that. That is, that sounds amazing. It's what is, wonderful. What is this internet you speak of? Yeah, you'll learn <laughs> 10, 15 years. Yeah, to, and the rest. <laughs> um, <laughs> the rest. It looks like this, uh, the Verizon gaming stuff, it's coming to the NVIDIA Shield and then later Android smartphones. I think those being your two first platforms probably says enough about what Verizon yeah. gaming is going to be that uh yeah you know just it does <laughs> it's not a contender that that's all that's all there is to it yeah yeah I mean it's you know good on there for trying to get into that space before it gets I guess way overcrowded but <laughs> uh, I, I'm still the one thing I'm still waiting to see is I you know we know Microsoft's coming and I know everybody's talking about it on the console but I'm really interested to see how well that does on your phone with LTE or something like that. You know, I really am waiting to see how well that does because I can't imagine it would work well, but I'm still holding out hope. So, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, Anthem will feature matchmaking for every activity in the game. Um, so no. all those pe people that complained about Destiny and raids not having matchmaking, even though they're, I guess, won't be raids at first in Anthem. Okay, bad, bad, bad comparison. Um, <laughs> uh, Anyways, matchmaking for everything in Anthem. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> it's cool because they had four years to watch Destiny <laughs> do their thing, so they pretty much could just be like, well, we're going to do all the stuff that you were doing wrong. Right. Right. So. Makes sense. Uh, matchmaking for everything, that's a good start. Uh, for raids, I, s I was always on the fence about, like, should you be able to matchmake? I think it should always be an option because options are options, whatever. Right. But right. myself, I couldn't imagine just, like, solo queuing for a raid team for some of, like, Destiny 2's or Destiny 1's hardest content. Like, 
Oh, that would gosh. be such a crapshoot. So could you imagine? I mean, on the on the upside, at least you wouldn't be breaking friendships up at that point. It would just be randos that That's you might true. never have to, you know. Here's, here's I guess some there's that. negative things about your mom at some point, <laughs> but that's it. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, so oh, I watched that trailer you dropped in Discord. The game looks so good. Yeah, after I watched that, it was kind of like, all right, well, I guess I am more hyped about this than I thought I was. <laughs> it does, yeah. It looks I, pretty awesome. I'm interested to see what the post-launch uh, content is, but at least with what they are starting out with, it looks like it's going to be really good. Isn't so. isn't their post launch stuff free too? I oh knew De- Division Two's was for the first year. I don't know about Anthem. It might be because there was no. Se- I don't think you could buy a season pass for Anthem. It. Won't have season pass or paid post launch DLC. Yeah, so it's like their DLC Whoa, and stuff free too. So whoa, yeah, dude, pumped. <laughs> let's do this okay. thing. All right, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, while we're on the EA train here. Um, you guys like Star Wars? Love it. You guys like Star Wars games that come out? Love it. Guess what? How about? <laughs> yeah. Guess what? They uh, canceled uh, another Star Wars game. <laughs> Hate it. Yeah. Um. So the uh, open world RPG Star Wars game that I want to say, and I apologize for not putting this footnotes. I want to say it was a Vancouver studio. This is not Respawn's game that is supposedly still coming out this year. But yeah, it was Vancouver. EA yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver Studio, EA Vancouver, um, has completely scrapped the open world RPG Star Wars game. Uh, they, we, at least from the reporting on Kotaku, we get the impression that they are going to be starting on a or continuing their work on a new Star Wars game, but there's no indication if it will have anything to do with this one that they scrapped. Well, so it was, that's you're good. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Um, so. After this, like, story had initially come out, it was funny because, like, as of now, this is rumors, right? This is, like, Schreier had three different sources telling it, so most likely it's right. Um, But the day after, EA actually put out a statement, and I'll just read it. Um, There's been speculation overnight about one of our Star Wars projects. As a natural part of the creative process, the great work by our team in Vancouver continues and will evolve into future Star Wars content and games. We're fully committed to making more Star Wars games. We're not in denial. Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we're not doing that Star Wars thing, but we're still gonna do Star Wars stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, Doug, we already deleted the files off the hard drive. <laughs> we can't even go back now. <laughs> like at that point, just uh, just say, hey, do you think someone, we're doing something else. Do you think someone took home a uh, a flash drive and accidentally lost it? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I I am of the belief that that happens all the time. I I hundred percent believe that that probably is the thing. So, Do, what I don't see so how hard is it to make a Halo Wars type RTS Star Wars game and reverse it as you are the dark side. So those are all your stormtroopers and you are taking over World X Y or Z. There's I, your game done, dusted. Give it to me. I would argue not only is it probably not hard to do that, but even if you made a bad one, it would still probably make a lot of money. Also, the, you I, know, it's Star Wars. You know, it it essentially is the closest thing to a franchise that prints money these days. So, and I'm sure they've got a back catalog EA somewhere of some sort of RTS where they can reskin it. I mean, yeah, it. Oh. they should make a Star Wars RTS because God knows they're not doing a Command and Conquer one. Rip. So, they might as well make some kind of RTS, you know? Oh, okay. But, yeah, I don't know. I and, and they are, and for the pace that they're putting out Star Wars games, doesn't seem like it's a very fast pace. So. No, but I don't know if they got burned from two. Oh, they got burned. About they got burned from that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know whether that slowed them down ever so slightly. Um, They're, the last update on this story that I would say is important is that this apparently this project was super early in development still, so it's not like they were pulling the rug on something that had been 10 years in development or something. Um, and it looks like they're just trying to do a smaller scale project, and it's loosely aimed for 2020. So, So there's that. I mean, like, it, KOTOR 3, that would sell a ton of copies. Like, what I feel if like that's stuff what out this there. was? Oh, God, don't even. Oh, dude, don't say that. <laughs> don't even. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so, 
You just gave me chills. Broken hearts everywhere. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I it's it, I I, I kind of wonder how long the deal with Disney and EA is because they aren't going to be able to make Star Wars games forever, and they can't just keep scrapping these games. So what? I, One I of them is going to have to come out that isn't Battlefield or Battlefront Three. Well, I think this puts a ton of pressure on Respawn now, for sure. For their... Because... What is the name yeah, of that one that's Fallen out? Knights. Is it Fallen Knights or something? Oh, or who knows? Just Fallen Fall Order. Fallen Order. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yep. Spoiler alert. You'll get to play with a lightsaber, and you're a Jedi, so shocker. Oh, great. You ruined it, Doc. <laughs> I know. Well, hey, that could still be good. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that in a Star Wars game, but, you know, I... It, that's Respawn we'll making that game. I'm pretty pumped. Oh, I'm optimistic. This should be yeah, good. No, I'm optimistic. Um, but, uh, yeah, that definitely puts more uh, more pressure on that. And I, what do you guys, real quick, what do you think the odds of that game getting pushed back to 2020 is? Did Which one? The Respawn one? Yeah, Respawn. Because I feel like they've hinted for a while that it's coming out the end of this year, I th- right? I thought they straight up said it at the... Was it at the Game did they, Awards did he or something? Actually announce it, or is that EA? He was like, uh, "Our game will thing. be coming 2019." Or something. Oh yeah, the most awkward, like it was like a pan over to the uh, wherever they were sitting. It's like <laughs> they, like they they asked him five minutes beforehand, "Hey, you want to give a spill on this game?" He's like, uh, "I guess." <laughs> yeah, like it was nothing substantial, like <laughs> no pictures, no videos. He was just like, oh, yeah, we're working on a Star Wars game. Should be done next year." <laughs> gonna be dope uh, can you get that camera out of my face <laughs> thanks <laughs> try to drink my beer yeah right <laughs> okay so anyways yeah interested to see that but i i'm my, my point is that if there's if with even more pressure on that game i wonder if they will push it back but you know we'll see um microsoft is following uh epic's uh lead and they removed the carlton and the floss dance Sad day from uh, Forza Horizon 4 following all the lawsuits going on with Fortnite. <laughs> so they just got ahead of that whole mess and were like, you know what? Scrap them. <laughs> we're not even going to deal with that junk. Still confused on why these dances are in my racing game. So, <laughs> uh, Well, hey, man, when you get to stand by these epic historical monuments, you know, in Scotland and you're just flossing the entire time the camera pans over, it's pretty great. So <sighs> I'm just saying, you know. But that's uh, that's it for the news this week. Quick sorry hits. for all the sorry for all the downers. Um, but yeah, they weren't all downers. I got good internet, and Respawn is making a Star Wars game. <laughs> and that's true. Risky got gigabit internet, so <laughs> let's let's all feel good. The best story <laughs> um, benefits all of us. All right, that <laughs> uh, that's going to lead us into new games for the week um, coming out this Tuesday today. <laughs> Uh, we have the Hong Kong Massacre on PC and PS4. I I go through the games each week, and I kind of look at them. If there's ones that I think look interesting, I'll add them in here. So I watched a trailer of this one, and it reminds me of a mixture of, like, Max Payne with, like, John Wick, if that makes sense. Go on. But it's top-down. It's like a top-down uh, shooter, like a twin-stick shooter. But there's bullet time. And the way this guy moves and murders people, it's amazing. So I thought I'd put it in here. Go check it out. It is PC and PS4, though, which kind of sucks for Xbox people. Um, Coming out Thursday, we have Life is Strange 2, Episode 2, and Smite is coming to the Switch. Those are both on Thursday. Um, And then Friday is a big day. Our two big game releases are going to be Resident Evil 2 Remake. Yeah. Which... I'll definitely be playing. Doc, I'm assuming you're going to be playing. Chocolate, any interest? It's, it's a full price game, isn't it? It's a red box, uh, so I don't really care. <laughs> I can rent yeah, it. So. I looked at the price, and for that price, I'm not. I am not down. Okay. Do you guys have Do you guys have Redbox over there, chocolate or something equivalent? Uh, we used to have Love Film, which probably got bought by Amazon and probably <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> so Does that just randomly happened over there. It's just like, oh, what that <laughs> place got bought by Amazon? It's gone. Yeah, so I, d- I don't know. I I could look into it, but again, with the with the way I play games and the amount of time I have, even doing a a, a rental version wouldn't be. That's true. It would it Chocolate. would probably cost me more. I'm not gonna lie. I would pay good money to sit to watch you stream Resident Evil Two from beginning. Oh to end. my I'm god! Not gonna lie. 
I will pay for I'm, Resident I'm, Evil 2 if he streams that whole thing. I yeah, I with the I lights just off. thought of that and I'm like, I want to see that actually, yeah. With with you on camera with the lights off. Yeah. Oh my god, it'd be but so guys, good. I stream during the day. No, I don't How care. Is that gonna be... We're gonna put up curtains, blackout curtains, we're gonna we'll figure it You're out. You're not a vampire, you can do this. <laughs> All right. Um, on that same day, the twenty fifth, uh, Kingdom Hearts three is actually coming out. I know us three aren't super excited for it or anything, but for fans of the series, I'm assuming Friday is a big day for you. So have fun with that those weird Disney and Square Enix properties and stuff. And your Keyblade. <laughs> and your Keyblade. Um, yeah. And also this weekend, as a side note, the Anthem closed beta is going on so that's going to be the 25th to the 27th um this is the closed one so you do either need to have pre-ordered the game or subscribe to ea access or yes origins whatever their premium services can't think of the name of it um if you are if you do have access to this beta if you go to the to ea's website you should be able to get three codes um you have to click refer a friend or somewhere on there, but you can get three codes if you're in this beta to give out to your friends. Um, so if you're in our discord and you're looking to get into the beta this weekend or uh, yeah, this weekend, um, just reach out. We should have between everybody that's pre-ordered it. We should have a bunch of codes going around. Um, it'd be really cool if we can get a bunch of people into this game. So yeah, do that. And if you, if you can't make it this weekend, the open beta dates are February 1st to the 3rd. So that'll be open to everybody. So check that stuff out. Oh, cool. Wait. Yeah, looks awesome. Woo. Um, all right. Well, this show is the best show because it's our monthly mailbag show. So let's get into the monthly mailbag. You've got mail. All right, we'll add it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First up, this one comes in from Foo Foo Cuddly Poof. What a name. What is your favorite gaming memory or your most epic gaming memory? Chuckle, we'll start with you. Uh, um, my gaming epic memory is I'm the wrong person. I meant to write down some before we started this show. All right, well, you think about not. it, and I'll... <laughs> I'll go to Doc. He might steal mine. Yeah, I got one. Uh, it's got to be the end boss fight of Mass Effect 2 because that's one of my favorite games of all time. The music was epic, and I was so confused why the Terminator from Terminator 2 was <laughs> the attacking me in, you know, in that final boss fight. So, oh, God. Other than that, you know, it was epic, though, as, as hell. Metal as hell. Awesome. Love it. Um, for me, I've... I, we've got a question in like this similar similarly before, but um, beating Atheon for the first time in uh, the original Destiny as a raid, the raid boss that uh that's definitely still the best one of the best gaming memories and and most epic um, that I've definitely ever had. Uh, was it uh was it still the best considering even afterwards you didn't get the Gallerhorn? That was fr- it was the uh the Vex Mythical class is actually what we were looking for. From that raid. Okay, Doc. Ah, gotcha. Sorry. Your Sorry, my bad. Destiny guns right. My bad. Uh, Chocolate, did you think of anything, or are you just so uh, epicless that. Oh, that is harsh. I make a cream for that, so he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, the experiencing the first time playing online with, with someone is probably my most epic gaming memory. It, uh, I bet it is Mr. Randy Pitchford. <laughs> oh boy! Ooh, let's move on. Right, next question. <laughs> All right, this next one comes in from Ten Thousand Fists. You, oh, this is gonna be a, this will be a tough one. <laughs> uh, you wake up to find that you have somehow ended up in the game Left for Dead with three other Cross Atlantic Gaming community members. Um, who would you want alongside you to survive, and why? Is this a joint thing? This feels bad. I feel like we're just leaving people out by choosing people. That's okay. It's okay. Like, uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. Does anyone? Does anyone <laughs> no, want to start? He's okay with that. <laughs> I'll start. Okay. 
Who? I will take Chester for the good times. And he's a lawyer. That helps. What? It's Left 4 Dead. <laughs> in Left 4 Dead. Yeah, true. Good point. Yeah. Probably. I need someone to... Are you going to be suing the zombies for biting you? <laughs> well, no, I need someone to lift up my spirits. Ah, ah, okay. I will take Ten Fists because I'm sure that at some point there is a really small hole that someone will need to crawl into. Uh... <laughs> Phrasing. Did not Phrasing, see that yes. going anywhere there. <laughs> yeah, I should have uh, chosen that slightly differently. And then I'll take Risky with me because he is supposedly... No, actually, sod him. Damn hot. Because <laughs> he is a dab hand at Blackout. You, you do realize, two joysticks doesn't necessarily translate to an actual rifle in real life, right? <laughs> I, doesn't matter. To be fair, T- okay, well. I've also seen Dan Pot on a gun range. So, yeah, you're good. I guess oh, it's a born oh, killer, isn't apparently it? Apparently, the skills translate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, it's a good choice. That's my team. That's, that's yeah. a good choice. Uh, oh, Doc, geez. do you want to go or you want me to go? Uh, yeah. Um, I would say... I think uh, Ladonian currently has a sprained ankle right now, right? Oh, so mm. that's just zombie food. Well, yep. no. I mean, like... So, I would have him because, you know, like, nuclear option getting away is run faster than Ladonian. I'm going to make it. <laughs> Uh, so him is just the nuclear option for getting away. You gotta always have the ace up your sleeve. Um, probably, um, well, I feel like I should probably say Dan Pod now because you gotta have a gun guy. Um, I would know the the pharmaceutical side of stuff, and I've got you know I'm, I got the medical side covered. So probably, yeah, probably th- ten thousand because if he's shorter, he has less caloric intake requirements, so that's just less <laughs> rationing we have to worry about. <laughs> I mean, look, dude, if we're talking about surviving, you gotta get down to brass tacks, man. You gotta get cold and you gotta get down to the 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 nitty gritty. So yeah, less caloric intake, less rationing food, so he would be the next one. All right. Um, all right. I'm gonna start with Maldo Rob because he's the only military man I know. Oh, duh, yeah. Oh, Which duh, means yeah. he knows his way around some rifles, so he can kill things. That's good. That's very important in this type of scenario. Um, Sweeney. Sweeney's little, scrappy, and I think that's that's important. Give him a shiv, and uh, he'll, he'll he'll do some work, right? Um, it, I'm just going... Who's this last one? I feel like Moose is a pretty good option because he's like seven feet tall and sounds like Vin Diesel. So, like, in what type of scenario do you not need someone like that? Caloric intake. Uh, but then I also <laughs> know that Mellified is from Texas and probably has a bunch of guns. So, <laughs> I'm just thinking of having. So you want your armory. respawn point to be there, basically? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I want to. I want to revise mine instead of Dan Pod. I want. Uh, Sweeney, because in the off chance we are low on ammo or don't have guns, he is the melee guy. So yeah, for sure. I want Sweeney. Sweeney and, yeah. So, yeah, I've seen him punch. Ouch. Have you seen him stab? And should we call Chester? Has anybody <laughs> that we know of ever been in prison in Cross Atlantic Gaming? Hmm. Hit me up when uh, Left 4 Dead turns up. If that's... <laughs> no other questions, just if you've been in prison uh, and Left 4 Dead starts, w- we need you. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Because they're the ones, if we have a toothbrush, they can make a knife out of it. So, What if they are in jail for, like, tax evasion or something? Like, what? You still you still pick up skills, man. Yeah, like getting, you know, just getting sheer something. osmosis, being around it. Oh, oh God. I well, stopped. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> All right, next question. <laughs> this one comes in from Sweeney. Um, what do you think is the most inspirational game you have played, one that has had the biggest amp- impact on society? Uh, he says, I remember when I was a teen, San Andreas had a big impact on me. Uh, music and movies I started to listen to and watch. Me and my mates still greet each other as baller fools and OG, triple OG, triple OGs. Man, I don't know what I just read. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have paid more attention. Sounded really cool, though. San Andreas. <laughs> OG, triple OG, triple OGs. I don't know if one of those was supposed to be deleted. Uh, that sounds metal as hell. Yeah, it does. Should be a fourth one. Um he also says, and I think this is the right answer, is that Fortnite seems to obviously have the biggest impact on society right now. Um, yeah, I think that, or maybe even like World of Warcraft, maybe. like I don't know. With kids now and them standing or not standing and constantly flossing. <laughs> 
I mean, you know, good oral hygiene's a good thing. Chocolate, uh, you should be yeah, you know, frowning uh, upon that. And if they were flossing with uh, properly, that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> uh, just, I don't think yeah, you know I, what the actual floss dance looks like. <laughs> I know what it looks like. I just can't do it. Oh, Chocolate's like, oh, I know what it looks like, chump. Ch- chump. I can do it. <laughs> uh, uh, we got a video chump. coming to Twitter later tomorrow, so you just wait. Yeah, watching me doing it wrong. <laughs> I d- yeah, for me, it's uh, with Sweeney, it's Fortnite all the way. I don't think there's... I think you guys are right, because I-, I don't think I've ever seen a video game stretch as far into just people that you don't associate with having any knowledge of video games. I talk- like, I listen to Bill Simmons' sports podcast. That guy has never picked up a video game in his life, and he has talked about Fortnite more times than I can ever remember because his son plays it constantly. Like... Yeah, you know, it, it's just it's in every aspect of your, our lives now. Fortnite, and who would have thought that that would ever ever happen? You know, and also recently, I feel like somebody might have, might have posted this in Discord. Uh, the a helicopter was flying over some sports stadium, and Fortnite was being played on the jumbotron. <laughs> yes, I, was it Moose that posted? No, I think so. Um, but then I all this also happened this year. I remember at the uh, wherever the Brewers play with their stadium, uh, a bunch of players were playing Fortnite on the jumbotron at the field. When that sounds so on like awesome, an off day, though, by the way. <laughs> dang, that's cool. Uh, Coming in for practice, yeah. Fortnite that input practice. lag, though, let me tell you. Yeah, at that point, do you care? <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean I've thought about the whole theater thing, running out of theater and stuff like that. You know, that always sounded cool too, but. That's what I want for I my know. 30th birthday. Everybody wants to go out and party hard. I just want somebody to rent me out an IMAX for the <laughs> night in my Xbox. Hell yeah. And just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> just, leave, just leave you alone. A friend show up. It's like, uh, the doors are locked. Yeah, I know. It's supposed no to be. No way. <laughs> leave if presents at the door. Yeah, if you want to talk to me, jump in party chat. Other than that, go <laughs> yeah, away. I'm on, I'm on party chat. <laughs> but you're not showing online. Oh, whoops. <laughs> oh, like, damn it. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, this one comes in from Dan Pod. He says, you guys did a top five games episode. I want to know what your biggest game disappointment was in 2018. Uh, what game were you the most hyped for and most let down by? Um, Doc, we'll start with you. I feel like the right answer for me would be Battlefield Five, but I, I, I've kind of come around to where I, I don't have that much hate for it. I, it's more dis. I mean, yeah, it is disappointment, but... I still got enough enjoyment out of it and still do that. I don't really want to say that one, but I don't know if one affected me as much as that. So even though I'm still – I want to say it with a caveat that, yes, it's my most disappointing game of 2018, but I still have a lot of fun with it and still play it. So It was funny. um, If you reached out. I was in party chat with him when he mentioned that he submitted this question, and he said that he was going to phrase it. Risky and Chocolate, what are your most disappointing games? Because we all already yeah. know that Docs is Battlefield <laughs> 5. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's small stuff, but it's stuff that affects every time I play the game. Like, I've been over, I've been level 50 since like three weeks the game came out, and I haven't gotten any company coin to upgrade anything since the game released. So it's stuff that affects me every single time I pick up the game and play, and they've said that they're going to fix it and they're working on it, but. It, it, the problem is that every time I log into that game, even though I'm having fun, I'm constantly reminded about the issues I have with it. So that's, you know, but that's all I'll say about that. All right. Chocolate, Aww. you have one? Yeah, I think people are going to hate me for this. It's Red Dead Redemption 2. Ooh. Yeah, this, the, the, horse, the horse riding has just put me off completely. I don't want to sit there for 10, 15 minutes in cinematic mode or not in cinematic mode riding a goddamn horse answer i know it's a cowboy game well, there you go i know it's a cowboy game but ugh, yeah i was just trying to strangle so, you through my mic but i couldn't do it no use the most force. disappointing game i'll give you a disappointing game you want to know what the most disappointing game of 2018 was black it was state of decay 2 <laughs> no i i disagree i know continue we've we've also had this conversation doc so <laughs> i know how you feel about this game uh state of decay 2 is state of decay 1 um it, uh, 
It's not even state of decay one, is it? It's kind of one point one <laughs> and a Child half. Child knows where I'm coming that. from. <laughs> but again, like for people that like the first one, that's what they wanted, and that's what they oh, got. Dad, so. well, no, I loved the first one and put so much time into the first one. And when the second one came out, I was like, "You guys didn't improve on anything. You just made this bigger, and now I can play with friends." Kind of. Yeah, <laughs> kind I of. I have to agree with. Uh, I don't I agree know. With I mean, risky here, Doc. It's. <laughs> I mean, that, I guess that's one where I've always taken into consideration how small that studio is, and I've yeah, always kind no, of appropriately, sure. you know, kind of thought about what I should really expect. I will say, for how much time was between that one and this one, yes, I expected it to definitely come out less buggy. That's for sure. I agree with or that Or even part. look better. Uh, it didn't look that uh, much better. Put the two yeah, side by side. I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah. You're, you're not wrong, but I. But then again, I mean, that's, that's not what I'm getting out of it. I mean, what I'm getting out of that game is base supply management in a zombie apocalypse like and i don't know maybe because like i just enjoy that gameplay loop so much is why i still really liked it but i i, I could see why that would be yours though I, I do i could see that but only if you're in your game and not in my game well no you still carry over loot you it was find, only in the, certain yeah but right? the base management part yeah, well they did the when... diablo stuff basically where in diablo 3 is you see certain loot drop the other person sees other loot drop you're never fighting oh, for it's loot like, like in war exactly yes it's it's like it, world of warcraft you know everybody sees the same thing they have to roll for stuff diablo in this game is you only see stuff that you can get basically uh which i again i never had an issue with that personally no but, that part's I mean, fine it's the building of the base and you can't so me and uh, me and hb gaming we started one on his account i believe and the idea was that we were going to build a base together i didn't know that it didn't cross over to mine right right and at that point i was like Oh, that! Not I've wasted two, three hours on his game, but it's like that disappointment of I actually have to start again if I play it by myself. And I think that just leads to the fact that they their next game just needs to be the online version of that. Basically, I think that just yeah. needs to be their next game, honestly, because I think that's what people kind of probably, if more or less, wanted all along, and I think that's what they're probably eventually leading to, maybe. But yeah, but yeah, I think they're going to lose a load of people on three. It depends. I mean, if the game's good, the game's good. You know, it just depends. I mean, if it's if it releases like two did, you're probably right. Yeah. All right. The next one. <laughs> this is a good one. This one comes oh in God. from Rocker Dude. He says, using only your bare hands and feet, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? And why? Chocolate. That's easy. I would go. <laughs> I would fight a hundred duck-sized horses and duck. Same because and same. <laughs> that, that 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 big duck gets one bite on you, game over. You lost. That's all I was picturing was this like yeah. beak that's like seven feet long, just yeah. snapping me in half. Horses, the their biggest thing is they've got a kick, but when they're a duck size, that kick's only going to do something. Right, much. like I feel like my so, kick yeah. can catapult. A duck-sized oh, horse. That, and I mean, like, you pick up two horses and swing them around in the circle, and, you know, you've got your own horse blade going on there, so. And, like, you know, ducks. Improvise. picturing a duck-sized horse is, like, cute and adorable, but picturing a horse-sized duck is, like, horrifying for whatever reason. It's going to give me nightmares tonight, I'll tell you. Yeah. Or, like... Oh my god, have you ever been around geese when it's like mating season or like once they have like chicks around? Can't say that I have, Risky. No, Risky. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> okay, maybe that sounded Please maybe tell that us. sounded a lot weirder <laughs> than it needed to be. But like oddly specific. Yeah. <laughs> but whenever geese are like walking around roads and stuff or like they're just they're everywhere in Syracuse then apparently because if they have chicks around and you're within like 10 feet, they like charge you and start honking and trying to bite you and shit. Nice. So I think I just have this weird fear of birds in general. So a horse sized any type of bird that nightmare fuel. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that was, that was an easier one than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. This next one comes in from, Ladonian chocolate. Hopefully, this makes sense to you, and these aren't some weird other things in your weird land. Uh, but would I'm you rather have hash browns <laughs> or home fries? I presume home fries are just the home chips that you make at home. Oh, here we go. 
I'll go with hash browns. Correct answer. <laughs> Chips. Um, uh, hash browns are more like. Um, I don't know what hash brown is. Yeah, the, uh, I'm not going to explain it. To no, you explain guys, it because I want to make take... sure it's the same thing. I, w- I want to hear the <laughs> the sub substituted words to describe it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I buy in McDonald's. Oh, okay. Well, that was way simpler than I thought it would be. Yeah, or I, when I picture hash browns, I picture like the shredded, like a shredded potato. Well, so that's my question. Are we? Are, are we saying it can be loaded hash browns also? Like, can you put, like, cheese and jalapenos and stuff in there as well? Like, I mean, because that, that no. wins if you do that, for sure. And home home fries are more like just chunks of potato, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, or do I have this backwards? So, but, well, see, I almost have to look up what home fries, what classifies that, because I know steak fries, I know uh, crinkly fries. Uh, well, no, see, home fries is here, a breakfast got... thing. Oh, then I'm thinking of a totally different thing. Then maybe I need an explanation of what home fries oh, are. So uh, <laughs> this is the question that we're gonna get tripped up on. Uh, so home fries, at least as far as I know, are more of a chopped up potato that you would serve with like onions for breakfast, like side I side of home fries, with, like your eggs or something. I don't know what that is. Oh, There's no way that, that you don't know. Is what that, that a northern is. thing? I maybe we it don't is. call them home fries. Oh, that's crazy! And then hash browns are like the, like the stringy potato. <laughs> that you would yeah, also yeah, eat. hash browns. Yeah, well, I'm picking hash browns. You could take your onions and go to hell. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hash browns is also my answer because I there's too much potato and home fries for me. But I, ch- hey man, I I don't to all you people like I did, you probably did this too risky. How many times you been at like, like Waffle House at two a.m. in the morning? Maybe you're maybe not sober and eating greasy greasy hash browns like loaded we don't like, have waffle just... houses up here you have huddle house a what a huddle nope. house <laughs> it's like an off-brand well anyways never mind neither we have the ihop and denny's i was gonna say ihop i was gonna guess with that I thought waffle house is like essentially like white castle this is everywhere we also don't have white castle what where do you live the moon central new york <laughs> new york city has white castle but as far as i know that's the closest one to me. So, and that's f- IHOP's not bad though. Hours IHOP's away. got good hash browns. Or do they have good home fries? <laughs> oh. I mean, I, you know, all right. So we, are we you... all just agreeing on hash browns? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because we know what they are. Uh, okay. <laughs> hash browns. <laughs> this, this next one comes in from Blade. I'm gonna. Oh well. Bike horn a part of it. What? Oh, no. I was going to say I was just going to oh. rephrase it. <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what's your childhood game that re- that you played that still makes you go, damn, I love this gaming stuff? That's not what it says. <laughs> I don't know it's not what it says, but I don't feel like I'm having bike horns in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do either of you have a childhood game that you think about that way, I guess? Super Mario World. Okay. <sighs> Super Mario World was really good, yeah. Oh, the best game Music, ever. Music, the gameplay, everything, yeah. Desperate for it to come to the Switch properly. Huh. If only it would come to that online service. <laughs> yeah. That's when I shall pay my £20. My original thought went to Double Dragon 2 and Super Mario Bros. 3. I think those are just two of the earliest games I can think of that I really enjoyed and put a lot of time into. I'm going to say Harvest Moon 64 because it got me into that Stardew Valley type sim type game. And Ogre Battle 64 was really fun too. I'm going to say those Ogre two. Ogre Battle? Like Shrek? Look it up sometime. No, look it up sometime. It's, like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a game that I've never really seen do that RTS style uh, yet since. But uh, it's you got to look it up. To, I, I'm not even going to try to describe it, but it was really good. Um I bet there's some people in cross Line Gaming that knows what Overwatch is. It's a real-time tactical is. role-playing game developed by Quest Corporation. Thanks, Google. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and the answer is hash Metacritic browns. gives it 82%. <laughs> Don't get me started on your chips. Uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Uh, this next one comes in from Super Kate. What would you take with you if you were stranded? She didn't say stranded where. Wait, stranded where? Yeah. <laughs> that is a... Very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In a dark alley on an island. Like, right, like stranded we... at the in-laws, uh, my phone, stranded on a desert yeah. island, maybe some 
flint and steel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just do sat- satellite radio, call it a day. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go with, if you were stranded at your in-laws and also do stranded on a desert island, chocolate. Uh, I can't do the in-laws because I don't have any. And on a desert island, I'll bring my switch. All right. Is it is it cheating to say satellite phone for the desert island? Is that so cheating? you can? Call oh no! Someone? Sorry, let me change that. <laughs> no, you're screwed, chocolate. <laughs> you just gotta hope your battery lasts forever on that no. switch. <laughs> I want speedos. Oh, <sighs> at least you have a sweet well, tan okay. when they find your dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Crispy. This is a skeleton with a speedo on its pelvic yep. bone. <laughs> Doc, how about you? Uh, well, I'm not going to say satellite phone because that's just cheating. Um, I would say on the desert island, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to stay on brand with video games here. I got to say the Switch. I mean, it's made for that. So, well, that with like a nuclear battery that just lasts forever and might give me cancer, but who cares? I'm on a desert island. I'm going to die there anyway. So. Instead of inviting you to my camp that I have built with my <laughs> flint and steel, I probably didn't actually build the camp with the flint and steel, but... <laughs> when I'm alive much longer than you guys are, I'll uh, take your stupid items, and I will use them myself. So, plot twist, mine's password protected, so good luck. I will use it as fuel for my fire. Damn it. And no. <laughs> it'll give me cancer. Oh. You would get the final laugh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I should have read through some of these, because I don't know if anyone's going to want to do this one. Um, this one comes in from Free Radical... What's your most embarrassing moment other than doing a podcast with chocolate? Does that mean she chocolate is. doesn't have to answer? <laughs> I think it Docs, does. Docs, what's your most embarrassing moment? Or one that I <laughs> feel... Uh, <laughs> maybe come back to me. I don't even... Uh, yeah, maybe maybe come back to me on this one if you've got one teed up. Uh, yeah, I um, my first chart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh Probably the, <laughs> yep, was out to dinner with a a, a lady, and uh, well, that's how we ended that night. <laughs> not not your future, not your current. Uh, no. Uh, okay. It, it, it was a past girlfriend. Shocker. It wasn't like a first Shocker, date by the way. or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that happened. Um, wow. One of the most uncomfortable. <laughs> wow. And like. You have to go on the next couple hours trying to think, like, do they know? Did I, did I do a good enough job in the bathroom taking care of this mess I made? Man, how glad am I that I didn't wow. wear the khaki pants. <laughs> wow. Nothing will ever, ever beat that, so. Um, but, yeah, I'm not uh, going Nothing will ever wash that stain out either. No, those went straight into the trash. That didn't, <laughs> you don't try, you don't come back from that, chocolate. Those get burnt with fire. <laughs> Damn, I mean, I, that's still I, I I knew something like that might be coming. But that still caught me off guard. That whole that whole story. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good one, but it's an honest. What one. was the conversation? What was the conversation like after that? Like, it what, was uncomfortable like, because it, it didn't get talked about. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> so it was me just sweating for the next like hour or two. Like, I'm really not feeling well. Wow. I think uh, I think we should go home. Yeah, I know we have to go to the movies. I don't know if I could sit oh. here in this <laughs> for another hour or two. You want to go shopping? Want to buy some pants? Let's go buy some pants. <laughs> oh my gosh! Chocolate? Oh, you have God. anything? Uh, well, my son shat on me the other day. That <laughs> oh, was, no, uh, no, that's just every that's just every Tuesday. That, that's every Tuesday in Chocolate's world. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, not the way he did it this time. Oh my oh, God! Eventually, it stops being embarrassing. I think. Yeah, the poor little one wasn't well, and I was changing him, and then there was a cough oh. or a sneeze, and a. Those go hand in hand. I can uh, tell you from experience. Poor little yeah. guy. D- d- poor, my poor jeans is more <laughs> important. Did you burn them or try to wash them? Uh, I cried a little bit as they were my nice jeans, but yeah, they they they're gone. Good choice. Oh. Mm. <laughs> All right, Doc, yeah. you good? You... Yeah, the one that probably pops into my mind first off is uh so i uh the area i grew up uh i still live at and grew up in is uh centered around a large lake um so there's a lot of a lot of boat docks and a lot of uh marinas and stuff like that and uh, one of my first part-time jobs was uh around that area and uh so i was in a sh- i was in a con- you know shop or working a register um and uh 
this one girl come up to check out uh, wearing a super, super revealing top. Uh, you know, say what you will. Um, but that was that was happening, and I uh, was ringing her up, and I think it was like, you know, however much change she had, and I was, it was like uh, 4.55 was the amount of change, and I just remember I handed her the change, and I said, there you go, 4.55 is your change. <laughs> so Straight I the- literally had a Freudian slip that, and I was just like, Huh. And I didn't uh. say anything, didn't acknowledge it, and she kind of smiled and walked off, and I'm just like, wow. Doc, if she <laughs> smiled, you should have chased her out of that store. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was too embarrassed at that point. I was way more awkward then. Don't so. blame you wow. at all. Uh, yeah. All right, moving swiftly on. This one comes in from Moose. What movie do you guys catch yourselves watching every time it's on TV? He said he has a couple. Gladiator and Forrest Gump. If they're showing off the surround sound at Best Buy with one of these gems, I'll see you in a few hours. <laughs> um, I'll start. I don't. I have cable, but we literally only use it for sports stuff. But TNT is always playing Star Wars movies. It seems like or like all the time. So if any of those are on, I'll usually sit down and end up watching those all the way through. Any of them, besides maybe A New Hope, or not A New Hope. Ooh, jeez, the Phantom Menace. Oh. Almost offended some people. Ooh, <laughs> How about you, Doc? Uh, let's see. Um, you know, Gladiator might be up there. That's one that I will watch from beginning to end whenever that's ever on TV. Um, I, I feel like... Uh, go, go, Chocolate, if you've got one. I, actually, I want to think about this a little bit more, <laughs> too. Sorry, oh, <laughs> I know I did that before. Doc's going deep. <laughs> well, you know. Um, so for me, I think it's any 80s film, your Top Guns, your... My, even though it's not 80s, but those films that I grew up watching are the ones that I would I would just sit and be mesmerised by. Adventures in Babysitting. The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Mm, I yeah. wasn't overly oh. keen on The Breakfast Club. Whoa. I love that I know, movie. I know. <laughs> so much. I don't think it translated well for me. Because um, you don't eat American breakfast? English t- yeah. Because you don't like you know, good movies? Or? don't like detention? Oh. I hated detention. Oh, there you go. Here's your problem. Yeah. Yeah. They made us write lines, not sit there and chill out and have Yeah, that's time. the most chill, relaxed <laughs> detention I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Might have been the most unrealistic part about that movie, maybe, actually, yeah. you know. But, yeah, so that, that, any type of those films I, I love just sitting down watching, and then my wife will moan at me and call me an old man. Um, she's not wrong. Yeah. She's not wrong. So, she, she just... <laughs> so I think yeah. I got my answer. It's pretty much any sci-fi horror, whether it's good or bad. I pretty much will always sit down and check it out, whether I've watched it before or haven't, like... I don't know anything from the thing to aliens to. I was know, just gonna say aliens because like I was like '80s and sci-fi horror. Totally, totally. Which you know you could argue some of the best ones can. I mean, the thing also. You know, then I mean it's, uh, you know, even bad ones like Ghost of Mars, things like that. Uh, you know, bad sci-fi stuff. I still, you know, still enjoy. So I think probably like older sci-fi horror or just sci-fi stuff like that. All right. This so next one comes in from Chestar. Metric system versus imperial system. Which do you prefer? <laughs> this is easy for me. Yep, Doc. What do you think? I mean, I, I work in the pharmaceutical industry, so metric. I have to do that anyway. So, yeah, I wish everything we had was by tens. I don't know why it's not. The one thing we got wrong in this country after the Revolutionary War is we made up a stupid, stupid math system. Anyways, go ahead. And chocolate. <laughs> I'm with Doc. I don't understand the whole your way of thinking over there. It's completely wrong. I think I only dislike it because no one else uses it. I was obviously <laughs> raised with it, so like whatever. But why wouldn't we just use what everyone else was using? <clears throat> T- makes perfect sense. I don't, th- Sometimes you got to yeah. change I mean, things our- to make them better, you know? I mean, our drugs yeah, that... here goes by kilograms. We even, half the stuff we do even goes by metric. I don't know why we're not fully converted. So, I was going to say, how's that working out? Taking over the world with your 
measuring system is it working with zero working okay cool yeah we uh yeah <laughs> come over to the good side no. <laughs> <laughs> just wait to just wait to imperial 2.0 it'll blow you away just wait till you have a pint a full pint oh heaven I mean, we... if it's guinness i don't want any part of it oh no god no yeah. oh, i don't toast. i don't like liquid chalk it turns out <laughs> burnt toast <laughs> uh all right this next one comes in from super catrix would you like to do the podcast full time? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I that that'll never happen for me. I mean, I can't possibly replace the career I've got. But I mean, obviously, yes, that would be an easy answer. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, agreed. If I had forty hours a week to just focus on games and like producing stuff, hell yeah, I'd be all about it. Could you imagine? how much better our content would be if we had <laughs> if this Not was our full-time job <laughs> what are you trying to yeah. say chocolate <laughs> imagine how much less we would suck if we did this if we put more effort it, into this it is true Precisely. but like in, in stuff we can't even talk about but like amongst just us all the time we're talking in our discord channel it's just how many ideas we have and stuff we want to do and, and being able to do all of those or try them all would be amazing yeah absolutely it's it's tough when you have to but, find a balance of like Yes, I have to work 40 hours a week. Yes, I have to do stuff for the podcast. And yes, I need to play games for enjoyment and then also for like having something interesting to talk about. Like if I wasn't on this podcast, would I literally just play Blackout and nothing else? Who knows? <laughs> I would love to do this stuff full time. I think I know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's like risky time for the podcast. Probably. Discord risky is playing Blackout. <laughs> For be a pro. Um, next one is also from Kate. Cocktails, spirits, or pints? Doc, what are we what are we classifying spirits as? Jack Daniels, vodka, like hard liquor. I would okay, say the gotcha. liquor yeah. without the the mixer and the mixer and the mixer. Yeah. Okay, so straight. Okay, gotcha. Um, I would go pints. Yeah. It depends, obviously, what it is, but I would say pints. Yeah, when I started, I would have said cocktails, but at this point, pints. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> what? It's the best yeah, way to start. Can be. I mean, cocktails can be fine. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's just if I'm talking about the one, I'm probably like if it's like a blue moon or like a, a like a summer ale, something like that. I, I would pick that for so sure. So, are you not a fan of winter beers usually? Because I not. No, not usually. No. Uh -uh. Yeah. Winter. What the hell? Are I, you I like uh, like uh, uh, like Blue Moon, Ho Garden, one of those like that. You put like a, or even even it too like those that you might put like an orange or something. In, it, it tastes really good in my opinion. Chocolate. How about you? I'm pints, pints all the way. Yeah. Pints all the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Easy. That we got some there's some good some e some good either or uh, questions coming up next. This one <laughs> is from Sweeney. <laughs> Zumba or salsa? I think the easy answer is salsa because none of us have to get out of our chairs for. I, th I think that should have been a everybody on three one. <laughs> on well, I'm assuming we would have all just yelled salsa really loud. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, definitely, yeah, uh, yeah. That's what I would have said. Yeah, yeah, salsa. I want to get up and shake my ass. <laughs> You're looking. At, yeah, it's like chocolate's like. Yeah, I totally didn't hundred percent the Zumba game on 360 with the Connect. Uh, yeah. yeah. Which. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Looking at this question a second time, uh, do you think Sweeney meant salsa, the, the dance, <laughs> or, or the food? <laughs> oh, I changed my answer. Salsa, the food. That's my answer. I took it as salsa, the food. <laughs> 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 oh, that's why I said we... I almost <laughs> dropped the microphone. <laughs> I was like, this is the dumbest what? question ever. Who would want to get up and dance oh. when you can just eat a pile of salsa? Yeah, yeah, and I'm the guy, I'm the idiot for not knowing about home fries. Okay, uh, I but he also put a crying, laughing face at the end. So I, you know, maybe next time label your dances versus your foods. Cause, there you uh, go. Throw it, throw it back on the patron. That's what we stand for. I'm here. easily confused. Wait, do, do you know what? We haven't bashed a patron in Sweeney. That was a stupid weeks. question, you asshole. No, <laughs> last five minutes, guys. Let's save it for the last five minutes and let's just let's just get it all out of our. Next system. one comes let's in see. again from Super. Catrix, Star Trek, or Star... Nope. What? D d there's no such thing as Star Trek. It's Star Wars, that's it. Move on. Next. Oh, all right. Hey, I'm all... all, all Whoa, yeah. All aboard that boat. <laughs> Doc, are, Hi, you yeah. a, are you a Trekkie? Um, you know, 
I, I <laughs> would – here's what I'm going to say about this. I, I'm probably – I think the correct answer is Star Wars, but I would say I think the newer Star Trek movies have been on par, if not slightly better, than the new Star Wars movies. Whatever, bro. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it's – like my love of the original trilogy can never be replaced, and I feel like nothing has ever topped that, or probably can. So, they have booted that franchise again, yeah, really well with the new, with the new Star Treks. Apart yeah. from the last one, which was pretty, uh, like the, like the yeah. new Star Wars are are good. They're fine. It's just, it's just like any other big summer blockbuster movie now. Whereas like the old Star Wars, I feel like was like, you probably watch that movie a hundred times probably some of those yeah you're never gonna get that magic again from that long ago with it seeming so out of this world that's what makes it tougher to decide now for we're we're taking into account more recent stuff for me is all i'm saying but yeah i would probably pick star wars yeah i i've also i don't like star trek was just too old for me i think like i'd I thought you were going to say nerdy (laughs) no (laughs) yeah star trek's way too nerdy star wars all the way (laughs) I don't know. I just, I probably just haven't ingested enough Star Trek besides like the newer movies and episodes here and there of old stuff. But you just haven't you just haven't dived deep enough into the Romulan Klingon alliances because they get pretty interesting. Yeah, there's probably like eight thousand episodes at this point, so probably not going to take Let that. Let me talk dive. about the Borg. Uh, You're a Spock. <laughs> um, next one comes in from Professor Pluto. If you were going to brag about something relating to related to gaming. What would it be and why? Oh, size of my controller. What? <laughs> huh? What are we talking about? Buy the Duke? Is that what happened? I might own a Duke. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> what if I do? Um, whoever wants to go first, I'll go first. Do it. So, for two weeks in a row, I have beaten Professor Pluto on our Cross Atlantic Gaming leaderboard on True Oh Achievements. boy! Shit! Oh. Shit! The fire has been thrown. God, he's going to explode on the achievement leader. Oh, so he's now. coming for he's you now. Before. Oh yeah, I mean he's going to wipe the floor with me. But you know, it was going to be last week when I saw the the uh, message. I was like, okay, I beat him for one week. That's fantastic. Two weeks in a row, in a row. So I can't wait to listen to his podcast and hear what he says about the fire that I've just brought. Oh, it felt like a semi chocolate call out challenge like he was about to like come out there and start yelling and making weird noises and stuff but he didn't no no i've got this i've got this down at the moment good i've got him repess repet i can't even say it it's getting late and doc how about you uh probably my gaming setup right now because it's it was kind of a labor of love setting it up over time and it was it's a long time coming too like in a lot of the components and tvs and and the table and everything i have it's not it's nothing it's like old stuff you know it's nothing new high tech other than maybe like my monitor and the one x but you know it it, it, you know whether it was just over time getting good deals on stuff like the table itself is just an outdoor picnic table but it's just flat and it has flat edges to where i can clip do like clip uh stuff on for like uh, cameras whatever it might be but like yeah, just like over the past three, four years, just kind of getting all the stuff to build that up and kind of make it the way I like it and stuff like that. It's kind of that would probably be my, you know, my gaming bragging kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, that'd be my answer. And I'm getting ready to put in some uh, CAG related purple LED lights around it too to really make it a uh, themed. Say what? Your cam girl yeah. career is really gonna take off. I can't wait. <laughs> you don't even know the subs coming in now. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna go crazy. And there's my full-time yep. career. And there it is. Um, I don't know. This is a tough one. Blackout wins? Can I brag about that? I feel like I do that anyways. So. Oh, I thought you were going to say time put into yeah. that mode. I don't know if that's something you need to... That, like, that's not really a braggy <laughs> thing. If I could brag that I had like 150 <laughs> wins and it only took... <laughs> like maybe 20 hours that'd be cool but when it's like yeah i played like 300 hours and it's been out three months people are like oh man do you need help <laughs> so i mean that's one or just not being an adult and just buying stuff whenever i want that's i feel like not a lot of people get to do that that's it's probably just poor money management on my part but yeah we'll go with blackout we'll, we'll, 
<laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> going to swing it back around to the blackout yep. win part. <laughs> All right. Next one comes in from Chaotic. Uh, this one is for Chocolate Mostly. With mouse and keyboard integration, do you see games like Football Manager getting a release on Xbox? Because me and Doc don't play any RTSs or other things that would be great with a keyboard and mouse or whatever. But he doesn't yeah, care so Chocolate, give me your answer. It's the only answer he's getting. So I definitely want to see it. Whether we will see it is another another story. I remember it coming out on the 360. I think I murdered that game. Oh, really? Just, that was that was on the 360? Yeah. There, so it was it was either Football Manager or, or it was Championship Manager. I can't remember which one it was. But, um, yeah, that game, I just pumped hours and hours and hours into it. I remember staying with my my wife, it, obviously my girlfriend at the time, she was at university and I made her go to her classes, her lessons, while I sat there for a whole day sitting playing. It was football manager, yeah, playing football manager. It was oh, so joyful, so joyful. Only time she went to university as well when I came down to tell her to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wow, that, that unpacked a lot more than I thought we bargained for. But anyway. <laughs> All right, next question. This one comes in from Chestar. You die and go to heaven. The big man upstairs takes you to your new heavenly game room. What's your setup looking like? Doc, you don't get to answer because apparently you have the best gaming room in the world. So, woo! Chocolate, <laughs> what kind of stuff is in your perfect game room? Oh, I would love to have. This is going to sound so sad. One of those cheap nasty ikea tables so at the moment i've got like a big i can make your dreams come true chocolate this is gonna be easy if you just need a cheap ikea table (laughs) so at the moment i've got my wife's uh my wife's desk and it is slightly bigger than the chair so it just feels too big trying to clip on kind of my uh my mic boom and stuff like that is just frustrating annoying I didn't want to go with the usual, oh yeah, I want three 1080p monitors. Yeah, you probably want 4K monitors want... at this point. Well, t- yeah. T- <laughs> so I didn't want to go for the boring one, but like right now, what really winds me up about the setup I've got is my crappy desk. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it, yeah. Hey, I, I feel you, man. That's the whole reason I have an outdoor foldable picnic table for mine, because it's got the flat edges where I can clip stuff. I mean, I, I feel you. Like, that's a... Yeah. That's a you know, first world problem, but I, I get it. it. It's a it's an issue with desk for sure. And then and then trying to get that ratio of getting the right table with a chair where you can fit comfortably yeah. under, yeah. or have the armrests go under or go out however you want to, however you want it. It's bloody annoying. So yeah, it's sad, but that's the type of. I feel like you would be. I love you, Chuck. But I feel like you'd be the world's worst at the genie with three wishes game. <laughs> a lot of dudes like You would just blow them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Want a new desk? I want some pants Nothing and too can shit on. I need new jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and then can you get risky some washable pants? And boom, three wishes gone. <laughs> the jeans even See like, ya. what, really, man? Really? So, okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> we are done. See ya, son. Ciao. <laughs> Back to the question. Uh, Do you guys see Grandma's Boy? Yes. You know JP's mm-hmm. setup when he's working on games where his, like, oh, my God. The, <laughs> Yes. The chair like reclines back. His hands are like <laughs> up in front of him, and there's just like six different monitors like floating up above him. Oh. If that's not the perfect gaming setup, uh. I couldn't tell you what is. Somebody please Photoshop Risky's face on that and post it in Discord, please, because <laughs> that will With make blackout my day. on the screens on, on every uh, one yeah, of them. Yeah, every screen is blackout. Yeah. No, that's like. <laughs> Oh man! If I could just line my wall with these like 4K monitors, maybe like six. I think six is good. That seems like a a good amount. And then for things like during football season, being able to put like different games on each screen, and then still play my Xbox oh, wow. like on the center screen, and just being surrounded by what I love. Like that's my favorite thing is like Sundays during football season, having like Red Zone on one monitor to my right, and then whatever video game I want to play on my left. Just I agree. Leave me yeah. alone in my Just being space. Being surrounded by stuff yes, you love, yeah, so good. Um, and then obviously I'd have shelves everywhere for Legos and trinkets and Funko Pops and every single weird nerdy thing I own. Because at this point I've got like, I don't know, probably like three decent sized boxes of just 
either like figurines or like Lego sets that are just take up too much room. Like more space would be ideal, so I could unpack some of this shit instead of having to pick and choose what nerdy stuff I get to display in my game room. So more space for me. Mm-hmm. How about you, Doc? Uh, I would want a Magic console that had every game ever created and every system all integrated and loaded into it. Well, if that's not the right and answer, I, I don't know what it is. Well, and then, and then literally I would just be able to play, do, like, series playthroughs instantly and just, like, all that stuff, you know. Could you so, also just talk yeah. to it instead uh, of needing a controller? Uh, well, theoretically, this Magic Box, we'll call it a Magic Box, would just read my mind instantly and just, no. Sounds amazing. So, John. Yeah. That but would yeah. be unreal. Yeah, just be like, hey, today I'm just going to play through the entire Metal Gear, Metal Gear series just from beginning to end. When we're doing full-time or, podcast gaming things. Yeah, and then I'll just have somebody tell me about what happened in Valkyria Chronicles. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> that game. What? Oh, somebody mark it down. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> all right, last question comes in from Scottman. You have the chance to interview anyone you like on the podcast, dead, alive, gaming-related, or not. Who would it be? And why? There's also a second part to this. We'll get into that in a second. Um, whoa, bless you. I did not mean that. You got it. At all. Well, you mostly, got mostly, but you could definitely hear the <laughs> reverb about to start. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think we've had this question before, and I think we landed on The Rock or maybe John oh. Cena. I feel like it was wrestlers that turned into superstars. <laughs> Um, but as far as being able to interview someone, I just want, I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with the office, but give me rain Wilson, but he has to be Dwight. Like I want Dwight and I want to be able to interview him because I think he's fascinating. Also, Chris Pratt, (laughs) I think would be really cool to have on a podcast because he's awesome too. He seems like a cool guy. Yeah. What if, what if you could interview a character from a movie or story or something? Yeah. I just told you Dwight from the office. Really? That was that. Okay. All right. Well, we could talk about beats and stuff. That was a terrible answer. You're right. <laughs> I should have come more prepared for this question. You just totally pulled the chocolate genie uh, yep. dilemma. Yep. Ruined there. that. Like you had anybody you wanted, and you picked Dwight. <laughs> God. You got to pick Maverick. Tom Cruise. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. No, Maverick. Right. Not Tom Cruise. Maverick. Yeah. The... And then so when just, I stand so over him a... with my six foot two frame, it's just a cocky pilot who. Is that a bar? Oh, yeah, I'll slap that bitch down. Yeah, our answers suck, Chocolate. Doc, what's your answer? Man, <laughs> uh, I would probably say, um, let's just go with, uh, I think he would be good comic relief, but I'm going to pick Thor from um, the new Marvel Universe movies. Uh, or what's Chris his name? Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Yeah, because I feel like he'd be good comic relief for just straight-faced answers. Okay. I don't think that's much better of an answer, but... No, not really, but hey, at least whatever, it's like Doc. Dwight, so... Second part of this question... <laughs> he has a big hammer. What? <laughs> does have a big hammer. Uh, the reverse part of this question. Uh, also, who would you never want to interview? I think Randy Pitchford's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. Uh, it depends what he's talking about. It does depend what he's talking about, Chocolate. You're right. <laughs> That's true. If he's it telling does. me about Borderlands games, cool. Unless he just always circles back to certain topics, Magicians you know. and stuff? Yeah. yeah. I told you guys, I love magic. Who doesn't? He he, he does love magic. I mean, the man yeah. likes a good show. So. Start calling him the magic man. Yeah. Oh. I am All the right. magic man. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Sorry, God. Do either of you have a good answer for this question? I do, but I probably shouldn't say it. Is it it someone you know in real life? No, no, it's someone that you guys love over in your country at the moment. Is it a politician? Yeah, Uh, yeah, I think you're talking (laughs) to the two wrong guys here for that. (laughs) There there, there was a hint of sarcasm in my word of love. Yep, that's a good answer. (laughs) That that is a good answer. (laughs) Good job, Chocolate. You win this this round. Yes. (laughs) You redeemed yourself from the genie. Uh, Doc, do you have anything? Uh, I feel like the probably the correct answer is probably Hitler. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Uh, R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly. Oh my god. <laughs> Hitler or R. Kelly, uh, interchangeable. I guess I don't know. Pretty much on the same playing field there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> R. Kelly pees on people. 
Hitler burns people. <laughs> R. Kelly, on topic, stay focused. We're talking about Harvest Moon here, okay? We're not just focus. <laughs> this podcast has gone nowhere good. Man, we really ran it off the tracks there at the end. Uh, man. All right. This is the part of the show where we choose which question. <laughs> which question didn't make chocolate sneeze? <laughs> all right guys did any of these questions stick out to you and that, well, now we think I, do, do, I, yeah well, I'm, I've got one. I'm not i'm not gonna pick this one because it's too short but we got the most laughs out of risky thinking salsa the dance with salsa <laughs> the food i do appreciate that i just want to give a quick shout out to Sonya i would also still and, like uh, clarification that he wasn't talking about salsa mm-hmm. the food also, so I mean, it has an asterisk by it. So. <laughs> I think maybe that's what he was going for. Salsa the um, food? Um, no, no. Th- 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 leaving the one with the rose in your mouth. The, oh. <laughs> leaving it open for the whole. Is it salsa the dance? Is it salsa you know the what's food? <laughs> Someone hungry? So for me, the question that brought up the best response is free radicals. Without a shadow of a doubt. The one where I sharded? Anything. Oh, I cry with <laughs> laughter with anything to do with toilet humour. 45. I, I, I like them. T- um, so. <laughs> but that's me because I'm a child and I think poo farts and willies are funny. That's, that's, that like that's that fair. One best too. Yeah. Makes us vulnerable for a few seconds talking about these horrible experiences. No, just listening to yours was the best. Yeah, you should have lived it. It was way better. <laughs> Got that <to> pass. <laughs> oh. Is it? What's the thing if you can spend a or walk a mile in a man's shoe? But yeah, in your case, sit a couple things. hours Chocolate. in my Chocolate. pants. <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate. Give me the odds. At what are the odds? Risky did not get laid that night. <laughs> if he did, oh my god, he was dirty. <laughs> Actually, and we're no longer <laughs> together. There was reasons. Because <laughs> she put something in my face. All right, well, congratulations, <laughs> Free Radical. We'll get a hold of you shortly for your amazing question. Uh, with that, talking about all this poop humor, let's uh, plug this show up. Oh, gross. This is what you First needed. And for- oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I see what you did there. Yep. Give me a second. Mm-hmm. It's all coming from a mile away. <laughs> Light bulb had to flicker there for a little bit. If you'd like to stay up to date with all things Cross Atlantic Gaming, you can head on over to crossatlanticgaming.com. There are links to literally everything there. Um, we have a patron page. If you support us, your name goes up there. We have our stream team members posted there bunch of other cool stuff and a bunch of different ways for you to get a hold of us and whatnot um if you'd like to hang out with us on a daily basis head on over to discord.io slash cross atlantic gaming hang out in our discord server where we talk games and whatever all day every day if you'd like to support us with your hard-earned money you can head to patreon.com slash cag podcast on the socials we are at cag podcast that's twitter and instagram um, and if you'd like to submit questions for things like this segment, you can head over to cagpodcast at gmail dot com. We missing anything? Uh, no, great, good con, no. good content. Oh, no, sorry, just kidding. <laughs> oh, sick self burn, doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait. Oh, yeah, you're right. If you'd Damn. like to get a hold of Doc, <laughs> he is Doc H one X one everywhere. I'm Risky the Kid everywhere and Chocolate. It's Chocolate Bear 80 everywhere. Thank you everybody for tuning in to this week's episode of Cross Atlantic Gaming. We'll catch you guys next week for an all new episode. Goodbye. See ya. (laughs) Bye.
something man. missing out of this. Uh, good <laughs> content. You're welcome. <laughs> Nailed this it. Is, this is where, at the end of the show now, you want to drop a fart and then go, we gotta go. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit there and let you listen uh... to yourself laugh about fart jokes for the rest of the night. Actually Listen to it. He's it. maniacal. It's hearing him laugh makes me laugh. <laughs> About a fart joke. It, it wasn't even a fart joke. It was the, the thought of me inserting a fart noise into the end of the podcast. <laughs> just made him drop down to the floor and crack up. It's just that it's just that innocent, you know, that innocent uh, three-year-old in, in chocolate. It just, you know. <laughs>